holes in the floor of my Suzuki Sierra here, my 1996 one, and that I ordered on eBay a while back some bungs or plugs, whatever you want to call them, these aren't condoms, but to go in the floor to fix up those holes. Hopefully they will fit and work, so it took a couple of weeks to get here, and I'm meant to be hitting my four driving this weekend coming. So let's see if they can fit, and let's see if it starts. I haven't started it in a while. Fingers crossed. <laughs> So they are a tiny bit, like a tiny bit loose, but they will definitely work. The inside of the car is a bit of a mess, but that's why I love it, because you can just get in and just, just go, you don't need to clean your feet, clean your shoes, it's already half packed with stuff, it's just dirt and everything, and it's just awesome ready to go vehicle. One of the worst fears while out four-wheel driving is getting a flat battery, so I'll show you if I can open this. Um, one of the things we've done to avoid that on this car seems I was a little car and I go out. So, under the bottom, I finally got it open. There's actually an isolator switch just here. What you turn one way, it completely isolates the battery. It turns everything off. The car won't turn over, won't do anything if that's off. Uh, so you, you can't physically leave anything on in the car. You just, it just isolates everything. Um, also, Suzuki, Sierras, Jimmys, any of these little four drives are absolutely notorious for being allowed on the road. So I've gone on eBay and I've bought a heap of sound deadening uh, spray, which you can see right here. Uh, and then this foam, what's a heat resistant um, foam, but one side's adhesive, so that sticks down and the heat side out. Um, and I've been cutting up a heap of bits and you can see them going okay, all in here. So it's full stainless, it's a full stainless steel intake uh, into the snorkel, uh, custom extractors and exhaust through. If you watch my Flinders Rangers vlog, which is like vlog, let's just say 20, um, you'll be able to see the extractors actually popped off the cat uh, and we drove a super, super loud car for like 1500 kilometers in two days. Um, but on that, that's turned on uh, the isolator. Let's see if this thing fires up. would say great success although she has blown a little bit of smoke <laughs> on a freshly cleaned couple of cars but we'll see so that isolator just stays on uh, it did struggle to turn over in the start but it actually seems to be running <coughs> meanwhile they get poison like bloody poisoning from the exhaust seems to be running very smooth so in my limited limited knowledge I reckon that's good to go for the weekend on the beach. One trick which I always do wrong is if you've got an isolator like that, you need to always leave this bonnet slightly unlatched, never latch it down. Because, now this is my bragging point, this is a 1996 Suzuki Sierra with center locking doors, like an electronic um, unlock lock. Although this car, thankfully, is a soft top, so I don't have to smash a window, because if that's closed and if the bonnet closes and the isolator's off, you can't use any of the central locking. Yes, you can pull the soft top off, but then there's a roll cage in here which I have to fit through that gap somehow because unlock the bonnet is right at the front. So you sort of get your head and your arm through to do it. I'm sure if we go away, I'll fuck it up and you will definitely see me do this at some point. Last final bits out to put in the car, like the swag and the jerry cans, everything. Got to move all these cars out. And then we can finally go meeting uh, Jake, me, well, me and Lillian meeting Jake at Port Wakefield uh, Servo and then going in from there because he has no idea of where to go. I think I don't have any idea where to go either, but as long as I sound confident, he'll, he'll think that I am. So we're packed, we're ready. We're five or ten minutes late. Sorry, Jake, if you see this <laughs> afterwards. We've been a bit lazy, but we are ready to go. The Suzuki's running for now. No, it always runs, it's perfect. Um, and then we need some fuel because we only get like 70 litres, not 70 litres, like 70 k's for a tank. That's not that, it's like 110, but it's still <laughs> it's bloody hopeless. Uh, and we've promised ourselves we're going swimming this time, right? Other times we go, we get lazy and like, oh no, we're not going to swim. We're definitely swimming this time. So let's strap in for another bench. <laughs> Move, we're gonna slide. 
Hey. <laughs> nice. You good? Australia Day, we're all packed, ready to go back. So I can spend another couple of days on my weekend, on my long weekend. Jake in the Utes almost packed as well. The mighty kayak came in, good use I think, trying to catch a dolphin or two. Trying to see some dolphins. <laughs> um, we've got Goo as well. She's spending her first uh, Australia Day here from, well you're living in Iceland and you're from Turkey. Tur so she's from Turkey and Belgium. And um, is now here on Australia Day, which is awesome. And Qatar, our other European friend, also from Iceland at the moment, who's from Hungary. Yeah, Hungary. So say hello to Qatar and Goo. They've had a great two days of this. I hope they've had a great two days. Yeah. Or else they've just oh, been sandy hanging out. We average swimming, your best. We were swimming with dolphins. Yeah, actually I forgot about that. Qatar went swimming with dolphins and cried. She, yeah. cried. she was crying swimming with dolphins. <laughs> average basically. It's fine. Average your best. It, <laughs> easy. Oh, I'm hoping you're having a great three day as well, guys. station for about an hour. Um, I can hear Lily struggling with some clothes or something out there. Um, anyway, stopped at the cop station because there was a massive truck um, just tailgating everyone through traffic and you know, being a bloody dickhead and then pulled up right behind us and was literally like had his bull bar on our rear tyre in a 90k zone uh, and then it was like flipping us off and everything. Um, and as we got to the next intersection, he was in the inside lane as it turned right and tried to like simulate running us off the road. Um, so we're like, nah, fuck this prick. Um, we're gonna report him to the cops, got some photos or whatever. So we, we spent a little bit of time down the cop station with a really, really lovely cop actually on Australia Day, um, reporting a, a driver. And the cop called him in front of us and he sounded like as big of an idiot as he drives. Um, and then the cop also called his boss, what was just as funny. Um, so, like, especially on Australia Day, it's just not a day to drive like a bloody idiot, and or any days, but especially if you're in a big rig, like a big semi trailer, um, lots and a, the lots of cars on the road. And I really urge anyone to go in and report people who drive like this. Like, you now I drive a high powered car, but I, I don't drive, I purposely don't drive like an idiot because you know what it, what it can take, and you stand out more on the road, especially if you're in a big truck. So, absolute fuck wit. But I'm super glad we reported and got to see um, that conversation between the cop. And him and then cop and his boss. Um, so I think that'll be the end of Australia, I think, unless we do something tonight. Otherwise, it's going to be me cleaning the car again. And I'm sure everyone here sees a million videos of me cleaning cars. I'm Matt Willie Williams. I parted my way through high school. I joined the army straight out of school as a rifleman. I deployed to Afghanistan for eight and a half months as a crew commander at 20 and turned 21 over there. I've travelled the world twice, jumped from planes, dove under the sea, drank from shoes in over 20 countries, and I regret nothing. Returning home, in a regular doctor's checkup, I was diagnosed with an incurable, inoperable brain tumour on my 22nd birthday. Since then, I've made it my mission to enjoy my life as much as I can and show that terminal illness doesn't mean your life can't be successful, meaningful and fucking awesome, whilst putting in as much effort as I can to raising money for brain cancer research. 
12 months of chemo done, 60,000 plus donated to research, and I'm fucking happier than ever. This is my story of refining my health and redefining terminalness and smiling through it all.